so happy the sun is out. Hello and welcome to my guide on all the things you can do in Guernsey, focusing mostly on outdoor activities, plus a few food and drink tips thrown in for good measure. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing and like this video. I took the ferry with Condor from Paul, that was so I could have my little VW Caddy camper van with me, but you can also fly from many UK airports in less than one hour. I also flew just after Covid but being double vaccinated made that very easy but I did have to buy 5 lateral flow tests for £25 on arrival but I'm going to put a link in the description for all the latest up to date information. My first thing to do is go hiking, you can really do that anywhere on the coastline of Guernsey but particularly in the south and southwest. Today I've come to Le Table de Pions, the fairy ring which is quite an interesting place itself. But there were a few children planes, I didn't get too many shots there. But this is the main reason I wanted to come to this area. The hiking in general and the coastline is stunning. There's also a fort to see, so make sure this one is on your list. You absolutely must visit Herm. I took the ferry which takes 20 minutes and decided to walk anti-clockwise around the whole island. The island is car free and it takes about two hours to do. Come to Herm Island. Uh, quickly across on the ferry from St Peterport with the Herm Trident. You'll get the hiking in before lunch and then you can relax on the beach later. You can also see puffins here but I just missed them. So here's a puffin in Scotland. We've been walking five minutes and already the scenery is stunning. I grabbed lunch at Shell Beach and let me just remind you this beach is less than one hour by plane from the UK and it looks like the Caribbean. If you're short on time or on a cruise and fancy an adrenaline rush, you can also see Herm on a rib boat. Alright, today from St Peter's Port, we are going out on a rib boat and he is not hanging about. This is the Herm wildlife tour with Island Rib Voyages and we saw seals even though we're a bit unlucky with the weather. Sticking with the islands, you must also visit Sark. It's another car-free island, so you do need a bike, and it takes a bit longer to get there on the ferry. The first thing I did was went kayaking from Decar Bay with Outdoor Guernsey. That was brilliant. Come over to Sark today, and we are kayaking around this stunning coastline. There is blue sky in the distance, which is the main thing. Then I picked up my bike and started ticking off the other sites, such as Le Coupe, Pilcher's Monument, Sark Henge, which was a bit disappointing, and do not miss Window in the Rock, that is spectacular. Right, I'm on Sark Island, I've been kayaking, now cycling, I'm so happy the sun is out. The final thing to do is grab yourself a well-earned pint after all the activity, but also because the pints here are cheaper than they are in Guernsey. So make sure you leave enough time to grab a pint. Next up is visit one of the many forts. There's a fascinating history on Guernsey and I wish I had time to explore that more. This fort is Le Merchant, and if you're a golfer in the area is the Royal Guernsey Golf Club. Look at the views from the 18th tee. This is the Little Chapel, one of the smallest chapels in the world and it's a must see. It's made of pebbles and tiny china pieces and the attention to detail is incredible. It also relies completely on donations, so do not forget. Another thing to try and do is go to a local event. Keep an eye out for local events and festivals. This is the West Show. I only made it for the evening, but it was a great atmosphere. There's tons of other shows throughout the year and even live music at Kobo Bay on some Sundays and gigs in forts. Next up, enjoy a sunset on the west coast. I went to Kobo Bay and got fish and chips. There's also a ton of lovely restaurants there, more on that later. It feels like a bit of a local tradition though to go to the chippy and sit on the beach. Make some time to chill on one of the south beaches. This is Petit Bow. It's stunning and you can go out on a kayak and even go coasteering here. Right, 
This beach is called Petit Bow and it's a Sunday, it's a gorgeous day and it's not even that busy. Easily one of my favourite spots on the island so far. I decided to spend most of my time paddleboarding at Fermain Beach which is without doubt one of my favourite spots on the island. Moving on now to food and drink and starting in St Peterport. I loved having a drink at the terrace with these views and my favourite meal was at the Hook. Fantastic food including sushi and amazing cocktails all in a sophisticated but relaxed atmosphere. I enjoyed gin tasting at the 5 star OGH, the old government house. They also do wine tasting and I had a sample of the food from the Indian restaurant on site and I absolutely want to go there next time. Next up I found a new microbrewery called the Little Big Brew Company, a craft beer and tap room. Lovely people, amazing beer, you can do brewery tours and a brilliant friendly atmosphere. Moving on to my other favourites around the island, my favourite restaurant was Rock Salt, right next to the gorgeous Shoe Bay, I doubt I've pronounced that right. I also had an amazing meal at the Kobo Bay Hotel, but sadly I could not get a table at the highly recommended La Reunion. The restaurant at the Imperial Hotel also has amazing views and a great atmosphere, but I was disappointed with my meal. But speaking of the Imperial, this is one of the places I stayed and the breakfast was much better and that is what you call a room with a view. For the rest of the time I stayed at the Beauset Marina campsite in the van. Now speaking of driving, I recommend bringing a car or hiring one. Just watch out for the filter system and get yourself a parking timer like this. Of course I did not get to do everything or eat at every restaurant so please drop your suggestions in the comments below and if you haven't already please subscribe. Thanks for watching and happy travels.